and welcome to day four on our advent calendar. I'm Mrs Brooks. Hello and I'm sorry I can't be with you. I will definitely be with you all next week. I'm out of isolation by then. Hooray! Um, and I've got with me today Singing Ted and Buddy. And you will see that Buddy had a word with me after day two. He said, even though you had your Christmas jumper on, Mrs Brooks, you just were not sparkly enough. So he's lent me a bit of tinsel for today. And I'll tell you what, it's done the trick. I'm feeling very, very, very festive. So those first two songs, I hope you enjoyed listening to them. Ted, Buddy, did you notice anything about those first two songs that I played? They seemed very different, didn't they? The first one was performed by the choir of King's College at Cambridge. And you may have seen in the front row, there were some boy trebles, some boy choristers who are about the same age as a lot of you. And they sing in this world famous choir. And that was taken from a special carol service uh, at Christmas time a couple of years ago. The second song that I played for you was by a punk band called Bad Religion. And they did sound very, very different, didn't they? I was certainly jumping up around in my, uh, my kitchen listening to that one earlier, but I wasn't to the first one. I sat very calmly listening to the first one. So what on earth could they have in common? Any ideas? Mmm, that's right. They are actually performances of the same song. And it's the song we're going to be having a look at today. It's called O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And it's a very traditional very old song. It might have sounded quite new in the punk version. Maybe you got the idea of it being quite old from the first version I played to you, but it's actually from the 15th century. So it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years old, but it's such a good tune that people have passed it on from generation to generation and we still sing it today. Now, they don't know much about this tune. They don't know who wrote it. It's anonymous. But plenty of people have had a look into where it came from and its origins, how it started. And in the 1960s, a lady called Mary Berry, not that Mary Berry, though this one might have made cakes as well, but a lady called Mary Berry, who was a musicologist, someone who studies music, found in a library in France a version of this. So it's thought it came from France originally. It was first written in Latin because it was a church song and that was the language of the church at the time. But we're going to sing it in an English translation today. Um, but even that translation might sound a little bit old fashioned. And that's because it was written in the 1850s. So again, still quite a long time ago. But I think it's nice to have some traditions and to learn things as they were and to learn the old ways. We learnt a new song the other day, which was written in 1986, the Stay Away, be ready. So we've got a lovely new Advent song. This is a traditional older one that I'd like to work on with you today. So let's get cracking, shall we? And have a little look and see what made this tune so popular that we're still singing it hundreds and hundreds of years later. Let's have a go. OK. So that's the first phrase. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. So that's the first phrase. Have a go at the words. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. And there's that word Emmanuel that we had in our Stay Awake song on day two of the calendar. Emmanuel, meaning Jesus Christ. OK, so let's have a go at saying those words again. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. Well done. Now let's put it with the pitches. And you can use your pitch hand to show the notes going higher and lower. And that might help you remember how it all goes. OK, mm, there's your starting note. Off we go. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. Fantastic. Did you get that singing, Ted? Mm, he says one more, please. It does wander around a bit, doesn't it? That's because it's come from chant a very, very long time ago. And it sort of wanders all over the place. And you can just imagine it floating around a really atmospheric church hundreds of years ago. Ready? Let's try that again. Off we go. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. Fantastic. One more time and I think we've got it. Ready? Off we go. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. 
Wonderful. The next phrase goes, and ransom captive is Ra'el. Tricky? Let's try it one more time. And ransom captive Israel. Let's put the first two lines together now and see how they fit and join on. Ready? Off we go. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. And ransom captive Israel. Wonderful! You follow those on together very, very nicely. Let's have a look at the next section. So that goes up slightly and then it comes back down again. And the words are, that mourns in lonely exile here. 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 So air is nice and open, nice long note there. That mourns in lonely exile here. Beautiful. The next bit goes. Until the Son of God appear. Until the Son of God appear. So we're all lonely and lost in the world, but then the Son of God comes to save us all. And who is the Son of God? Jesus! And when's he coming? Christmas! Okay. Until the Son of God appear. And what do we do at Christmas? We rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. So that's our chorus section there. The first bit was verse one that tells the beginning of the story. There are actually five verses altogether, but we're going to focus on verse one today. Uh, and that last bit there with the rejoices is what's called the chorus. So in between all the verses, that chorus of rejoice would come back the same every single time. So let's have a look. Sitting up nice and straight and tall, think about the note in your head, mm, get that pitch nice and high, rejoice, rejoice, and you can sound really happy there because we're joyful. Ready? Off we go. Rejoice, rejoice, lovely. Oh, do you know what? I'm not sure Teddy's sitting up straight enough. Let's see if he's sitting really straight and tall. Come on, Teddy. Nice and straight and tall, just like Buddy is, please. Mm, let's try that again. Ready? Off. We go, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Good. Last bit goes, shall come to thee, O Israel. Shall come to thee, you, Israel. Remember, it's the language from the 1850s. Shall come to thee, O Israel. And the uh, notes are... our starting note. Off we go. Shall come to the O Israel. That's the whole of the first verse and chorus now. Let's have a go and see if we can sing it from the beginning. Ready? Okay. Off we go. Oh come, oh come, Emmanuel. And ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O That is a tricky song to learn, but you did brilliantly. And if there are some bits that you're still thinking, oh, I'm not so sure about that, the nice thing about having it on a recording is you can just rewind it 
and have another go. Wonderful, I'm really proud of you. Now, as we started, we had King's College doing the choral version, that's the choir version of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Then it burst into the Bad Religion punk version of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And I'd like to finish off now with sharing with you my very favourite version of it, which is by a group called Pentatonix, which I'm sure a lot of you may or will have heard of. And it's a vocal version, even though it sounds like there's instruments in it, it's not. It's all vocal work, lots of beatboxing, lots of vocal techniques and sound effects. And it's all layered up to give this really beautiful, atmospheric, modern take on O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. So I'm going to leave you with that version. You, however, can rewind or fast forward to whichever version is your favourite. Have a listen to them all and decide. And um, join in with whichever one you like the best. All right, I'll see you very, very soon. Say bye, buddy. Bye. Say bye, singing Ted. Bye. <laughs> See you soon. Come to the deep, oh, is right.